Welcome once again to this little journey we are taking on linear programming as a part of the our course on convex optimization. Now what I am going to do today these are the two fundamental theorems of linear programming. A proposition first which will help us to prove the fundamental theorem of linear programming which has two, two components that every feasible uh, set if it is really non empty it will have a BFS and every optimal solution if there is an optimal solution there is a there is an optimal solution which is also in BFS. Now since most of you would be seeing this course through the YouTube I would and you have the facility of going back and forth which is not possible in real time. So it is very important that you look over these proofs which I will now carry out of this fundamental theorem because the in the proof of the fundamental theorem the whole idea of pivoting of the whole idea of the technique of doing simplex method is inherent. So I would request you that just do not look at this lecture once but look at it two three times so you get a hang of how the proof is done. It is those simple linear algebra but it has slight uh, it needs slight tricks so just have a look at them. So I start with this very important proposition which is needed to prove the fundamental theorem of linear programming which says that if x is a BFS that is I give you a BFS then x has at most m positive components because the rank of the matrix is m we can at most have a m cross m sub matrix which is invertible which is a full rank. So there cannot be more than m positive components in the basis in the basic feasible solution because rest the non basic part you are considering as 0. Though some basic solution can become 0 which is the case of degenerate basic feasible solution but it cannot be more than m and the sub matrix A i x which we have done which we have uh, defined earlier in the last class or in the last lecture that can be actually formed into a feasible basis matrix by adjoining some uh, columns from the matrix A, J, set minus I x. So let us get into the proof of this. So I will write it down step by step. So let k as before let k x is the cardinality of the set I x which can also be symbolized like this with this absolute value signs. Now as x is a BFS rank of A i x is nothing but k x. Now k x is less than equal to m since the maximum number of linear independent columns or rows you can have in the this matrix is m it has m rows and some columns and the say k x columns. So the number of linear independent rows that you columns that you will have can not exceed k x. So if x is a BFX it is k x uh, so and that k x cannot exceed m. So x, x is a BFX this is by definition of BFX this is true and now that k x cannot be more than m because m is the maximum number of linear independent columns allowed because the matrix rank is m. This is true since rank of the whole matrix is m. Now observe that if k x is equal to m then we are through. The most important question is what happens when k x what happens if k x is strictly less than m and that is what we are going to look into. Now what is this matrix A i x? It is a matrix formed of columns A1. I, I am just because we have assumed without loss of generality that the first kx columns belong to the matrix Aix. So, this is the matrix Aix, and all of these are columns of the matrix.
Now from the matrix A construct the matrix B with M columns. So, this is B is a full rank M cross M matrix. Now, these B 1, B 2, B M these are also chosen from M. These are all chosen from the set A. So, sorry, so not the set A, I want to correct myself, chosen from the set as from the matrix A. So, these are the columns chosen from among the columns of A and you form a linearly independent uh, set of columns and then what you have is a full rank matrix. Now, so B is a basis matrix. and forms a basis for the column space of A. You, you should know what is the column space of A. If not, just go and brush up your linear algebra a bit because we need a bit of linear algebra, quite a bit you see. Now, what does this show? It simply shows that the column A 1 can be written as summation lambda i b i i is equal to 1 sorry the m vectors. I guess I am quite adept at making mistakes especially in these sort of things. Anyway just a bit of fun on the way and you see here lambda i's cannot all be 0 because if all are 0 then a 1 is 0, but I have said that the matrix A contains no 0 column. So, lambda i's cannot all be 0 since A contains no 0 column. So, let me assume for simplicity that lambda 1, let us assume this without loss of generality, let us assume without loss of generality w log. So, we assume lambda 1 is not equal to 0. So, what would happen? I can express now b 1 in terms of b 2, b 3, b dot 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 b m and a 1. So, I can basically replace b 1 in the expression in terms of a 1. Hence, if I now make the new matrix, I will make a new matrix where I keep the a 1 column, I will now change the matrix b a bit and then I keep b 2. Then basically what happens? I have just changed one of the vectors, this is called replacement theorem in linear algebra that we change one vector, but you still get a basis. So, the rank of this a 1 b 2 dot dot b m this would still remain m because this would now become linearly independent because you would just write b 1 in terms of a 1 and that is enough b 1 in terms of a 1 and the others. Consequently, this now becomes a basis for the column space. I can write a 2 as mu 1 a 1 sorry i is equal to 2 not 1 because the b 1 is not replaced by a 1. Now, can mu 1 be equal to 0 a uh, mu 1 be not equal to 0 see. So, all mu i's are not 0 of course, because a 2 is not 0. Now, a 1 and a 2, a 1, a 2 dot 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 a 1, a 2, a 3 dot dot a k x, they form a linearly independent set of vectors. So, a 2 and a 1 is linearly independent. So, you cannot have all the mu i's to be 0. So, a mu from 2 to m. So, if all these are 0, then you have a then mu 1 cannot be 0. So, a 2 equal to 
mu 1 into a 1. So, a 2 would be linearly dependent on a 1, which is uh, not uh, true, because a 2 and a 1 are linearly independent. Since, think over it a bit, a 1 and a 2 are linearly independent, because they are from the matrix a i x. mu y is not equal to 0 for some i is equal to 1 to sorry so i equal to 2 to m. So, some i between 2 to m this is not equal to 0, okay, that is one step. So, what I am able to do now I can replace say b 2, because mu 1 would be of course, has to be 0. So, I assume that uh, mu 2 is not 0, so and the rest is 0. So, what you can do? if mu 2 is not 0, I can replace b 2 in terms of you can replace b 2 and express it in terms of a 2, a 1, b 2, b, b 3, b 4 dot 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 b m. So, means now I can make a new matrix by altering the columns of b that is a 1, a 2, b 3, b m and the rank of this matrix would become m. So, we can repeat the procedure. So, we, we had have in our hand in, in our disposal k x columns of a k x. So, what we can finally, have finally by repeating the process B k x plus 1 this indexing and B m this is of rank m. Now, let us now our new basis matrix, our new basis matrix is B hat which we give as follows. Is A 1 a 2, now of course, you have this uh, not sorry I should drop this. So, you have this b and rank of b hat we have just shown is m. So, B is a square matrix m cross m full rank matrix. So, this implies that determinant of B hat is not equal to 0 fine. Now, x was a BFS. Now, xi i let me set this xi i equal to x i for i equal to 1 to k x and xi i is equal to basically I should be more nicer writing like instead of writing like this, I can write like this, which is standard in books. Xi uh, i is equal to x i if it is this, and if 0, if i is equal to. Now, if I look at this matrix, if I look at this, then what is b hat into? So, b hat is a i x and some other part. So, only the elements with a i x the a i k x this this matrix. So, b hat actually has been broken into a i x and some matrix which I am writing for example, n for the time mean or maybe better way to write it is say b tilde. Now, a i x because it is a basis matrix and I have assumed that Okay, uh, I have at most k x, I know that there is at least means there is at least k x for sure k x non-zero quantities, right, because the rank is uh, k x of a i x. So, and the remaining I am assuming 0. So, if I put this, then if I multiply this x i comes from my original x the b f s. So, what would happen? Because in the original BFS from k x plus 1 to m everything is 0, and that is surely 
because because of the rank i rank i is equal to kx uh, kx is the number of non zero quantities so what i have now what a basis matrix and using the given bfs i have constructed new variable which is like this which is exactly basically the B original bfs so now i can show that b hat of xi whose components are xi1 xi2 xi n b hat of xi so up to beyond m it is all zero so up to m what is the situation so basically my original x is now divided like this xi and zero this xi is what i am now writing like this x i and x x i and zero x i for some components zero for some components so this so part of the first m is non zero and part is zero and the remaining n minus m the non basic part has to be zero so b of xi b hat of xi is anyway equal to b right because b of x is equal to b so b hat of x is obviously equal to b but it is b hat of x is what b hat of xi plus aix of xi plus 0 aix of xi is actually giving me nothing but b right so you can easily prove this fact now so this would imply because b hat is having determinant not equal to 0 which means that b hat is an invertible matrix. So, xi can be written as b inverse of b and of course, xi is greater than equal to 0 which implies that b inverse of b. So, that is exactly what we wanted to prove so not sorry b, b hat inverse. So, what we have done by adjoining matrix may certain. So, these b x plus b k x plus 1 dot 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 b m this part must come from the matrix A which is quite natural. So, adjoining these things adjoining these things to the matrix A i x that is b hat this is your b hat. So, adjoining this thing these columns from the matrix A j minus i x from this matrix I have been able to get a basis matrix which is also feasible. So, implies that b hat is a feasible basis matrix and that is exactly what I wanted. Now, we come and prove the fundamental theorem of linear programming. So, hold your breath. let us that is the theorem let us consider LP a standard linear programming problem. If there exists x element of C there exists x bar element of C which is a BFS C we know is a set a x equal to B and x greater than equal to 0 the feasible set. x bar is a BFS. If there is an optimal solution then there is an optimal basic feasible solution these two are the fundamental things. Once you know this, this is exactly the simplex method, this is simplex method will exploit this idea. So, we start again the proof those who are intimidated by the fact that so much proof is done uh, has to realize that what we are doing is a piece of beautiful mathematics and you in mathematics you need to demonstrate the statements you make. So, proof is if you do not want to call it proof do not call it proof the French would call it demonstration. So, you are demonstrating what you have said right like giving a proof in the court of law. So, it is 
to, to the mathematicians you are basically doing the same thing you are giving a proof in giving a demonstration of what you are telling that yes what I have said is correct in the framework in which we are working. Part 1, so I am proving this part now. Okay. So, let x element of C be given, so I have given you this. Now, x would have some 0 part may be have all 0 parts may be have um, it may be all the components are 0, all the components are strictly greater than 0, some greater than 0, some non 0. So, we assume the most general case and we instead of writing i x now I will write i because if I continue to write i x the things will get too much complicated right. So, I am just writing i because you know that this is this i will correspond to this particular x that is all j in capital J which consists of 1 to n which we have already noted earlier. So, it is an index of those components of x which has a positive value right. That is if this is true and if this does not cover the whole of j if i is not equal to j then x j is equal to 0 if j is element of. So, it may be that either this is empty or this is this is empty or that is immaterial. So, now I can partition A the matrix again into two parts. Again I am assuming okay, the first part first uh, columns i col columns corresponding to the indexes in the set i are in the first part of the matrix that is just a assumption we can make without loss of generality. So, I have broken it up into of course, you have to say it in it is more correct to put an x here, but just I am not doing because the symbols would get quite complicated. So, just to avoid the complications in the symbol, but if you want to write i x there is no harm if you write i x. Okay. If rank of a i or a i x is nothing but cardinality of i x or i, then x is a BFS and we are done. The interesting part starts when a i x or rank of a i. Now, let rank of a i is strictly less than the cardinality of i. This is the fun part because this will this is the part where you know you, you are not having what you want that you know you know that x is no longer a BFS, but somehow I have to generate a BFS. So, let, let us see I have to construct a point from the given data that will give me a BFS. So, what happens? Okay. Now, rank of a i is strictly less than i which means that there exists lambda j j is element of i that is corresponding to the those components those columns such that rank of a i is not cardinality of i. Okay. So, rank of a i is the maximum number of linearly independent columns. Now, if I take so, but here there are i columns. So, the number of maximum number of linearly independent columns here is strictly less than the number of indexes in i. So, if I take all the columns in this they form not a linearly independent set, but a linearly dependent set as a result of which I can have this where all lambda j's are not 0. So, again without loss of generality because this is 0 on both side you can just change sides. Let us assume that lambda j is strictly greater than 0 for some index j.
and define this process. This is called the pivot, what I am going to write down now is called the pivoting process and this is what is used in the simplex method or in Gaussian elimination in for the in that case. I should write R maybe uniformly, so I will write x R divided by lambda R this So, for all j x j is or j element of i x j is greater than 0, but lambda j could be greater than 0 could be not, but you have said that there is only some index for which this is greater than 0. So, there may be more than one also. So, you collect all those ratios and take the minimum of that. So, because there are only finite number of such elements the minimum would be one among them. Now, define. So, now I am constructing my BFS y j as x j minus x r by lambda r lambda j for j in i and y j you set as 0 for j element of you can keep on putting i x that is no problem, but just to avoid complication. So, up to this it is clear. Now, let us see what is the nature of y's. If you observe here x r by lambda r whenever lambda j is strictly bigger than 0 this is less than equal to x j by lambda j this is the case when lambda j is strictly bigger than 0. So, you can immediately write I can put the lambda j here and take it on the other side. So, I will have x j minus x r by lambda r lambda j to be greater than equal to 0. Now, if lambda j is equal to 0 or less than equal to 0 right. If lambda j is equal to 0 this is x j. So, x j is anyway greater than equal to 0 because x j is a feasible point and if lambda j is strictly less than 0 then this would be negative. When this would be negative, so negative into negative positive, so the whole thing would be non zero. So, what I conclude from here is that y j is equal to is greater than equal to 0 for j is equal to 1 to n. So, the first step of y's feasibility is proved an important step. So, now what I am going to check is I am going to write a y. Now, a y is what. So, I can divide it into two parts j belonging to i and j belonging to capital J, but not to i, but for that y j's are 0. So, a y is nothing but so j belonging to i now and that y j is nothing but x j minus so a. So, we are just writing down matrix multiplication I would not go on explicitly how do you write things in matrix multiplication because I am assuming you know this basic stuff. So, this is what you would have and then you would have x r lambda r can be taken out because it is fixed it is a minimum value. But you see this this part lambda j j this part is equal to 0, but x j j this part because it is feasible right and j j is only non zero part so which means this is nothing but ax so ax is equal to ax minus 0 but ax is equal to b so ay is equal to b and y is obviously greater than equal to 0 what we have proved earlier implying that y is feasible now observed what is the value of yr yr is xr minus xr by lambda r so how many positive components y has it has definitely the positive components of y so non zero components of y at most is there could be others which have the same value as x r. So, so, this would be at most is it cannot be more than this 
So, this implies that if I denote the new set i y the set of y's for set of the components of y's which are strictly greater than 0 then this is strictly less than i y is strictly less than this because this is maximum this is equal to so this is equal to less than equal to this and strictly less than this where i y if you are not feeling what I am writing i y is nothing but j element of j such that y of j is strictly bigger than 0. So, if now if rank a i is equal to cardinality of i y then y is a BFS if not repeat the process then y is BFS if not repeat the process. Stop here and think what it is. It is just like an computer program, an algorithm. You take certain steps, you compute certain thing. If this happens, you stop the pro problem, stop the program. If not, repeat the problem. So, it is basically a repeat until loop or a do while sort of loop. So, do this, uh, repeat, sorry, not do while, it is repeat until loop. Repeat this process until this happens. So, basically if you observe this, this whole theorem gives you an a very is of a very algorithmic flavor. So, so, now we are going into the second thing. So, by repeating this argument finite number of times we will finally, get a BFS of course, because we have only finite number of components. Now, uh, okay. how we will get the equality you have to think of it, I will leave it to you as a homework. Now, we will go to the major part that part b let x be element of c and x is an optimal solution. Okay, that is good. Now, again I break up for x, I know that this is a solution. Now, then a i x i. So, x i is the part of x whose all components are 0. So, I have formed a small new vector with all non-zero components of x strictly bigger than 0 components of x and that is of course, equal to b and let z naught is the optimal value. Of course, it is a finite optimal value we are not now that is obvious. So, z naught is equal to c transpose x or to c x or in other words it can be written as c i that is only those components of the vector c com corresponding to these components in i x i or you can write if you want. So, I am giving you many many ways to write the same damn thing. So, a is of course, partitioned as i those columns corresponding to the index as i and those columns which are not. Again, again you see there is an algorithmic flavor. So, this is the first step if rank of a i is i stop if not do. So, repeat until this is coming basically the new matrix that you are getting this is assigned to the spot in the spot of the old matrix. So, the whole thing has an algorithmic flavor and this is exactly the simplex method. The beauty is that the mathematics itself is generating the algorithm. then stop we are done that x itself is a BFS. If not then continue strictly less than the cardinality of i which is also written as this. Now again so there exists because now if I take all the columns of a i they are linearly dependent. So, lambda i is a vector whose components correspond to, corresponds to those indexes in j which are in i. So, basically I am writing. So, this thing is nothing but writing this. 
So, this is more a matrix way I mean a compact way of representing this same as this, this is same as this. See I can always consider C transpose I lambda I to be greater than equal to 0, because if C transpose I lambda I is strictly less than 0, we can replace lambda i by minus lambda i, because the same lambda minus lambda we will also work for this. So, now we will divide the whole thing into two cases. So, let me just write down case 1, case 2, case 1 is this, you might be wondering why I am writing this for all j element of i and this or the case 2 so this is a, this is all zero and also this is occurring and note uh, if c transpose sorry c i transpose lambda i is zero then we are case 2 because sign of lambda i is immaterial suppose i have this it doesn't matter if all of them are negative also i can take the whole thing on the other side and make all of them are positive or if i want to make some positive i can make some positive so, we can always get, so if this is 0, we are in case 2, because the sign does not matter. How did I write it, uh, case 100, 15. so case 1, so we are, we are in case 2, right. Now, we will consider the expression, we will consider a y as constructed in A y as constructed in case a. So, then we will compute the c of y that is c i y i, because on the other part is 0 you know it will be some same as c j x j j element of y minus x r lambda r c j lambda j. So, basically you have c i transpose x i minus x r lambda r summation or you can write it more compactly this is nothing but c transpose i lambda transpose i. Now, this if I have this I know to be 0. Uh, this is nothing but the objective value z z 0. Now, if, if is equal to 0, then it implies that c of y is equal to z 0. Now, this y can be assumed without loss of generality by looking at the case a, y can be assumed to be the BFS, because y has been constructed. If it is not a BFS, we will again apply the same thing that we applied on x on y and get a BFS. So, finally, we will get some y. So, let us take this y to be the BFS. So, y can be without loss of generality considered a BFS. So, C, C y is equal to z 0. Now, what would happen if C transpose i lambda i would be strictly bigger than 0, then this would be a strictly bigger than 0 quantity, which means this would imply C of y would be strictly less than z 0, but y is feasible that we have already proved or in the part a, this would imply that z 0 is not the optimal value.
which is a contradiction. Okay. Now, uh, we show that case 1 is not possible, because if case 1 is possible we should show that the problem is unbounded. So, let us construct some y, but this is not the y that we constructed in A, we are now constructed in it like on our own. So, this is the standard construction, this theta is just a non negative quantity, I have nothing to do with the original one there. Okay. Now, A of y can be written as summation in the same way y j a j plus y j a j, where I have partitioned the indexes over i and j not in i. So, this will I am applying for j here. So, this part goes to 0 and so what I will have is summation x j a j j element of i minus theta summation lambda j a j j element of sorry j minus not j minus i is gone. So, it is j minus i. basically this part goes to 0. So, I am just now analyzing this part and this part breaks into these two. Now, this is nothing but b and this is 0 which you know. So, this is b. So, now if theta is positive okay, and lambda j, because in this particular case lambda j is cho in the case 1. So, lambda j is chosen to be negative in case 1 lambda j is less than equal to 0 for all j. So, means this is becoming positive negative negative positive. So, this is anyway positive right and y j is any the this part is 0. So, y y vector in this particular case which of course, y I should write this y to be depending on theta. So, this y is greater than equal to 0 and a y is equal to b. So, y is feasible. So, let me try to compute the optimal value with this. So, let me compute the z c transpose y which will be summation j element of i c j x j minus theta times summation c j lambda j. Now, in case 1 c j lambda j had been considered to be strictly bigger than 0. So, this is strictly bigger than 0, this is greater than equal to 0. Now, this is my z 0 minus theta times c transpose i lambda i. Now, this is strictly less than 0. Now, this thing depends on theta. So, z naturally is depending on theta, you can put a z theta does not matter. If you put y in this case, this whole all these components are joined up into a vector called y theta. So, if theta goes to plus infinity, because this is now for the case 1, this is now positive, the whole thing is negative. So, if theta goes to plus infinity, which I can obviously take, this whole thing goes to minus infinity. So, if theta goes to plus infinity, so moving along this direction, z theta goes to minus infinity. So, if the case 1 holds I can show that I can create feasible elements y theta. So, I can take y theta to be a vector consisting of this of the form x 1 minus theta 1 lambda 1 x suppose i has a k x number of elements cardinality of i k x minus theta 1 lambda k x 
and then 0 0 0 0 0. This is my y theta and this is this y theta I am operating on here right. This you can write this also as y theta if you want does not matter. So, what I am telling that I can create a sequence I can show that if I increase theta then I can get a sequence of points y theta which at which on which the objective values keep on decreasing and decreasing and decreasing and decreasing without bound. So, this would imply L p is unbounded. So, case 1 cannot hold because I have assumed there is an optimal solution. This would imply L p is unbounded and hence case 1 cannot hold. So, this means only case 2 holds and we are done that there is of optimal BFS and with this I end my talk today and I would request you that when you see this on the YouTube repeat the run once again and carefully go through the arguments. Thank you very much.